Beloved in Christ, the Lord be with you. I welcome you to my reflection for the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. And the theme of my reflection is Forgiveness Without Borders. Our readings are taken from the book of Sirach, chapter 27, from verse 30 to chapter 28, verse 7. And again from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 14, from verses 7 to 9. And the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 18, from verses 21 to 35. The arrest in Christ. The readings of today center on the necessity of forgiveness in our rapport with God and with our brothers and sisters. The call and emphasis on forgiveness is grounded upon the fact that we are recipients of God's mercy and that we live under the forgiveness of God. The word forgiveness abounds in the readings of this Sunday. First of all, it talked about the forgiveness that God gives. And the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled his debt. We see this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 27. Interestingly, the first reading talks of fraternal forgiveness as a necessary condition for divine forgiveness. He says, pardon your neighbor any wrongs done to you, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. We see this in Sirach chapter 28, verse 2. Thirdly, the evangelist talks about forgiveness without limits. Then Peter went up to him and said, Lord, how often I must forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, Not seven, I tell you, but seventy-seven times. Thus, we may well affirm that the measure of forgiveness is to forgive without measure. Above all, St. Paul in the second reading presents the motive of forgiveness, which is nothing but our belongingness to the Lord. For this he says, For none of us lives for himself. While we are alive, we are living for the Lord. We see this in Romans chapter 14 from verses 7 to 8. Indeed, forgiveness makes the impossible possible. It transcends the human logic. It is the life of heaven here on earth. Furthermore, in the gospel, the parable on forgiveness, Jesus teaches us in concrete terms that we are all debtors before God. And this debt exceeds all the human possibility of payment. is a debt we cannot pay. I remember the popular lyrics by Elitz J. Kroon. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owe a debt I could not pay. In God, therefore, there is always a space for pardon, acceptance, and reacceptance. And that is how he pays our impossible debt. Jesus gives us wonderful example of forgiveness in and with the figure of the master in the parable. And Jesus Christ is in person, the concrete expression of that parabolic master. He says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. We see this in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. The most grievous debt of man before God is that of sin. The spiritual and moral retrogression and stagnancy below God's designs and abandonment of God. As such, God, out of justice, can leave man in his sinful actions, but he does not. Rather, he approaches man with mercy and forgiveness. As in the parable, he felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled the death. We see this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 27. In the parlance of God, pardon begets pardon. The one who has experienced pardon from God is called to carry out this divine gesture. Here the person becomes an object and a subject of God's mercy. In the measure he or she is able to give to others what he or she has received from God. In the passage of today's gospel, therefore, more than any other place, man is called to be a collaborator and a dispenser of divine mercy. To pardon those that offended us, and to receive pardon from the ones we have offended is the attitude that God expects from us. Importantly, it has to be a generous pardon without limits and measures. Remember, the word of God says 70 times 7. It therefore has to be a pardon that has its inspiration from the pardon 
received from God. For this the parabolic master asked, Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? We see this in Matthew chapter 18 verse 33. As we read in the first reading, it is pardon or forgiveness that God wanted as a condition for us to be pardoned. Pardon your neighbor any wrong done to you, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven, as in Sirach chapter 28 verse 2. The pardon of forgiveness we are talking about here has to be motivated by the filial sentiment that the Christian does not belong to himself. Rather, he belongs to the Lord. And for this, we have to hearken to the voice of St. Paul in the second reading, to know how to pardon from the heart. As such, it is a pardon that endures in time, leaving out every form of rancor, retaliation, and resentment. For if anyone knows his anger against another, can one then demand compassion from the Lord? Interestingly, if God calls us to become subjects of his mercy, it suffices to say that the church has to be a house of pardon and a house of mercy. The church is the house and instrument of God's mercy, and the sacrament of reconciliation is an existential experience of it. Humanly speaking, Sometimes we find out that pardon or forgiveness is indeed tasking, difficult, and to some even impossible. For at times you hear expressions like, over my dead body, I will never. Of course, there is no gain saying the fact that pardoning sincerely from the heart is sometimes very difficult, but not impossible. Once again, as we have seen in the readings of today, pardon is repeated like a refrain, as a condition to receive God's pardon. And each time I or we pray the Lord's Prayer, it reminds me of this evangelical truth. The Gospel with that parable of the two seven debtors exemplified this. To the question of Peter, how many times will my brother offend me? Seven times? In the palace of Peter, that is the human palace, seven times is already much. But Jesus responded, no, I tell you, seventy times seven, which entails forgiven always. Forgiveness without measures, forgiveness without borders. For a true Christian, there should be no limit, no measure, and no condition to pardon or forgiveness. But on the other hand, one can argue that if we pardon in order to be pardoned by God, then we pardon because of our own interest. Even though spiritual, but we may say that it is an egoistic interest. But this type of question springs from the human logic. But the most profound motive is found in the responsorial psalm. He, that is referring to God, forgives all your offenses, cures all your diseases. He redeems your life from the abyss, crowns you with faithful love and tenderness. He, God, does not treat us as our sins deserve, nor repair us as befits our offenses. As the height of heaven above the earth, so strong is his faithful love for those who fear him. As the distance of the east from the west, so far from us does he put our thoughts. We see this in Psalm 103. This instead should be the real profound reason and interest for pardon and mercy. The imitation of our Heavenly Father. For this St. Matthew says, Be perfect just as your Heavenly Father is perfect as in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. And St. Luke, treading the same line of Matthew, admonished, be compassionate, just as your father is compassionate, as in Luke chapter 6, verse 36. The Beatitudes equally resonates the fact, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall have mercy shown to them. We see this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. In the words of St. Augustine, we pardon in order to imitate the goodness and the mercy of God, to imitate his divine benevolence and comprehension, being conscious of the fact that, like us, our brothers or our sisters who offend us or err are poor, miserable, conditioned by human factors and limitations. Secondly, in the palace of St. Paul, the motive of this pardon is our belongingness to the Lord, for none of us lives for himself. While we are alive, we are living for the Lord. Attention, however, because to pardon 
and to forgive does not necessarily mean to forget. One can pardon, but does not succeed in removing it from his or her memory. To forget or to cancel a wrong received from one's memory is not within our power. But to forgive, yes. To bear grudges, yes. Because they depend on our will. To pardon also does not mean keeping quiet to injustice and overlooking wicked and evil actions. We have to continue to fight against injustice and to fight for justice. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, enlighten our minds and enlarge our hearts. Give us a big and a generous heart that is ready to forgive always in imitation of you, the manifestation of the Father's merciful love. Amen. And may the mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.